Hi, good morning, commissioners. Um, I'm here uh, to give you a very short presentation on the Sonoma Marin area rail transit or SMART and the role of the CPUC in assuring the safety of this new um, transit system. Um, SMART is a passenger rail service and a bicycle pedestrian pathway project that's currently under construction. It's been in the works since 2002 at, uh, when it was established by the legislature. Uh, when it's complete, it will serve a 70-mile corridor between Cloverdale in northern, northern Sonoma County and Larkspur in uh, Marin County. The capital cost was originally estimated at $500 million, and the funding sources include uh, federal funding, state funding, regional, um, and various forms of uh, local funding. Um, the smart rail system will be operating over an existing and rebuilt um, Northwestern Pacific uh, Railroad um, right-of-way, and um, it's also being um, equipped with uh, positive train control, or PTC. This is the map um, of the uh, smart uh, rail system that shows you the route that basically parallels US 101. And uh, right now, uh, smart is getting ready to put the first segment into service that will connect San Rafael to Santa Rosa. It's uh, roughly 43 miles long, and it has 43 at grade crossings. And the cost of this project ended up being uh, just under 500 million. Um, this, uh, the starting of uh, revenue service has been delayed a few times. Right now, SMART is estimating sometime at the very end of spring, end of May. Um, there's not specific date as far as I know, uh, but that's our um, operating assumption right now. Um, from a jurisdictional point of view, uh, we share jurisdiction with the Fe Federal Railroad Administration um, over the SMART um, system. It's a little different from other transit um, systems of what you typically think of a transit system, that it falls under FRA regulation rather than FTA regulations, and that is due to the size of the um, um, of the engines, the DMU uh, units. Um, we in SCD, in the Safety and Enforcement Division, have been meeting with SMART uh, on a regular basis for many years to keep tabs on the project, uh, review um, things as they're constructing, um, and uh, making sure that we are um, helping them uh, be in compliance with the states and uh, federal rules. Uh, we've also conducted numerous inspections, including in inspections of crossings, track, signal and train control, railroad equipment, um, and the maintenance yard uh, for these units. Um, as parts of this project, um, there are a lot of existing crossings that are being upgraded. Um, here you see some photos of the crossings before the upgrades and uh, the updates that were done below. Um, so all of the crossings in the smart corridor are being um, upgraded with signals, with uh, cleaning up some of the um, visual aspects with the paints. Um, and actually just this week, um, our engineer who is working on the crossings for the smart corridor, Dave uh, Stewart, um, has been doing an inspection of all of the 63 um, eight grade, at grade crossings um, that um, are in this um, segment. And we've also received uh, many applications for crossings. Um, several of those have been in front of the commission for a vote. Um, we had four um, formal applications. Those are typically for new crossings or crossings that are being completely rebuilt. And then at the staff level, we process um, 88C applications. Those are applications for modification to existing crossings. And uh, we had about uh, 57 of those. And there's still a couple that are just being um, finalized at the staff level. 
Um, one of the outstanding items right now is a couple of uh, clearance issues that exist at the yard. Um, I am not going to go into too much detail here because it's an open um, application in front of the commission and SCD has protested it. Um, but the, the, the issues here are the clearances of the wash rack uh, for the DMU units and the fueling uh, station. Um, per GEO 26D, the clearance is supposed to be 30 inches and here the clearances are um, much smaller than that. So we've been working with SMART um, on this problem and uh, will continue to do so. Um, so uh, the timeline is really coming up to when um, SMART will hopefully be operating. I know that a lot of people are really waiting in anticipation to have this option for their commute. Um, and um, from what we're going to be doing at the staff level is we have a full um, inspection tour of the entire um, segment. Uh, for April 20th, so any of you commissioners, if you'd like to join us or have your staff join, you're welcome to do so. Um, we'll also be working on any remaining issues uh, that are still out there. There's just a couple of things on signaling and crossings and things like that that are still being worked out. Um, the clearance issue in the yard that I was talking about. Um, the commission and the commission staff does not actually have to do anything to allow um, SMART to begin revenue service uh, that's being handled by FRA, uh, but we'll be working uh, with FRA and making sure that any you know, outstanding items are um, addressed before uh, SMART starts operating. So with that, I will turn it over and see if you have any questions. Thank you. I just wonder if you knew what the estimated cost would be to go from one end to the other. Um, I actually don't. I'm sorry. Are you, are you interested in, in taking over rate setting for <laughs> rail again? I'll find out and let you know. I do know that they're going to use the clipper card system, but I don't actually know how, how much the tickets are. So I just want to say a few words of, of praise and, and, and a word of caution. And uh, so having gone through the challenge of, uh, of a local government building a, uh, a light rail system, I understand the challenges and the difficulties of actually bringing it from conception to life. And so I want to commend uh, uh, the smart leadership for actually having done a fairly good job and there is specifically uh, just point to the fact that this is exactly the kind of example of fuel switching that we all talk about where we're actually displacing the use of petroleum fuels with clean electric fuels to actually help uh, uh, move people around. I, I also want to uh, uh, say that this is one of the first real rail lines that's, that's fully using positive train control, which is a very important tool for, for avoiding uh, rolling accidents due to unattended or, 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 or um, um, damaged uh, rail rolling stock. And I think that that's very important because it shows that in California we're committed even when the national trend seems to be walking back from the requirement of the positive train control in the freight industry. Uh, I will say, however, that, that I've talked a lot with our rail safety operations safety branch and there's not anybody who doesn't work in that that branch who who isn't aware of the statistics about uh, about uh, people uh, getting killed much less injured due to uh, to uh, um, um, rail vehicle collisions or pedestrian deaths and so uh, we we have spent years working with the the um, the horror of what happened at San Bruno where eight people died. 50 people die every year due to rail incidents. 50 people every year. And most people don't know that, most people don't think about it. But everybody who works for the Rail Operation Safety Branch has at least one incident in their work where they've had to account for the death of somebody who was trespassing 
or was caught in a vehicle on a track or who ran to try to get in front of a, a train. Increasingly, um, this is, it's common that you'll find younger people especially who have earbuds on and don't hear the train coming up behind them. And so 63 um, uh, grade level crossings is, is a risk in the community. And so my word of caution is that people here have, have both embraced the, the benefits of, of SMART and they also have to understand the risk that they have chosen to bring into the community. I'll point to one crossing, which is, is, I think has really caused us to think long and hard about grade crossings, the Jennings Crossing, which is right next to the school and increases the potential for these kinds of, of injuries and deaths. So my word of caution is to people is at the same time that you, you celebrate this tremendous victory and all the hard work and the, the benefits that it brings to the community, do your best to educate everybody and to be vigilant about people who are not paying attention to the danger of train uh, crossings. So thank you. And thank you. Know, make, yeah, I was going to make a follow-up comment about that, just to emphasize that the tension that the commission faces around meeting community needs, because as you noted, at-grade crossings can cause some safety concerns, but they're also desired by communities for the aesthetics. And there are other options. There are elevated crossings, and I've appreciated the regular briefings I've received from SCD um, regarding the number of uh, at-grade versus elevated crossing requests we've received. And to your point, President Picker, it is a choice that a community has to make between the, sometimes the aesthetics and the safety, and one that we have to wrestle with as well. Can I just ask a follow-up about the positive train control, is, which is very welcome. Is that being done voluntarily in advance of the schedule that the federal government is requiring? I know that's been an extremely controversial topic and that there have been many efforts to delay the actual implementation of positive train te control technology, notwithstanding the clear benefits and safety impacts uh, from it. Yes, uh, uh, thank you for the question. Um, this, uh, to my knowledge, it is being done voluntary by SMARTS. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of systems with positive chain control in um, California. So it is an area where we are uh, leading in the country. Um, and it's really been great to see the collaboration from um, the railroad and transit agencies here to be implementing train con positive train control in California. And I also want to thank commissioners for bringing up the, uh, the issue of at grade crossings. That is the biggest safety concern for SCD, in particular because there is an existing corridor and they do have freight trains on it right now, but they're very infrequent. They're usually just a couple in the evening and in the morning. And so there's a lot of habits of what we learned in SCD from the local community here to just be crossing more casually, not necessarily at designated crossings or just running across the track. And with, uh, with SMART, there's going to be a substantial increase in traffic, especially during commuting hours. And we are concerned that um, you know, people will be not really adjusted to the fact that these trains are going to be so much more frequent. So we really do urge the community to, uh, to be very aware. And we're also looking, uh, SMART is doing um, several outreach efforts um, in the community around railroad safety and um, uh, through Operation Lifesaver and um, you know, trying to alert the community about this issue and we're going to be looking for opportunities to partner them as well um, and do what we can to help in that effort. So thank you.